Hey guys, we are back for another job shadow. Here we are in a beautiful Melbourne. Sun's out, or not. <laughs> We're at Albert Park Lake, and we've got a, quite a unique job today. Nick's here on the job, so Nick is our, our technical director and operations manager who's gonna take you through a little bit about the scope of this particular project, because I think you'll find this very interesting. So we were approached by a client to see if we can identify what they call aquatic vegetation. They use a harvester to go and collect it, and the challenge is to identify where it is first so they can target that area. We're gonna get the drone up in the air to map the area to identify where it is and the density of it as well, so where they can focus their harvester. What are the things that they are looking for specifically? So basically the density of it so they want to target areas where there's more otherwise that harvest that you'll see out in the lake later it's just floating around trying to collect this stuff really just focusing on the density and where it is flying the Mavic 3 Enterprise with the RTK we can capture a lot more data quicker but also the RTK is more precise so they're looking for really good GPS points of where they're gonna target and from the auto mosaic image that we're going to create it's a geo tiff image so it's everything on that image is going to be geo reference yep. uh, and then they can overlay shape files to program into their harvester basically they just get a really high resolution 2d map of the lake yep. and it's accurate to the centimeter if they want to drop pins if they want to go all right this area of interest here how do we get there what's the exact location they're able to yep, do that exactly that goes straight into their harvester and they've got a trimble system a gps system that they can plot into that which will focus on that spot pretty big lake so what we've done is we've broken it up into five different sections so we've got five different takeoff and landing spots around the lake we do have to keep a 30 meter distance from the walkways around us and we are going to be flying at about 100 meters so we will capture those sections from that height with the job like this mapping water is not easy how do you plan on mapping water because we all know land surveys are one thing but when you're actually trying to stitch together images that all essentially look the same how are you going to do that it's definitely a challenge so water glass anything like that the reflections don't look good on, on models however the software that we would use like bentley or metashape yep. they do have options where you can actually filter and select that you are mapping water and it does actually correct it and model it in a different way but the biggest challenge here is going to be the cloud it's too reflective so i really want a sunny day where we can brighten up the area and see into the water a lot better potentially a cpl filter will help with that um, yep. but yeah that's our biggest challenge at the moment but oh, there's the harvester now <laughs> there he goes hey bob there's a bob <laughs> we'll call him Bob. All right, guys, let's get started. Coffee's first, and then we'll we'll gear up. Let's go. Tell me about safety and the planning for this kind of job. All right, so we are obviously at Albert Park Lake, yep. which is a Parks Victoria site. So we have to go through the process of getting a permit from Parks Victoria to, to fly in this area. We also are going to be monitoring a CTAF, which is a helipad close by. There's a hospital not far from here. Yep. Uh, it's not a controlled airspace, but it is a helipad, so we'll just monitor that on the CTAF, but also our smart controller which should let us know if any aircraft are coming in. Okay, so we've gone to the first start point. The drone is currently starting its mapping mission. Uh, so we're looking straight down and capturing photos. From what I can see visually here, we definitely can see vegetation in the water. You can see density comparisons to some areas, so some areas are a lot darker. Paul, check this out. You get you can see the vegetation. <laughs> so, so excited. Look at that. It's finished our first flight. Uh, we flew at 80 meters and about eight meters per second, which is about 30 kilometers an hour. You can see the, well, the color of the lake now is a bit of wind, There's a lot of movement within the water, which means the sediment and the dust from underneath is also kind of making the water a bit more muckier. So there's a lot of things uh, kind of interfering and going to kind of mess up the image so the ideal condition it'd be no clouds sun and a calm day a calm <laughs> day and like glassy water which will probably never happen in melbourne so coming up today just to finish the job and we've completed the whole lake on a 45 degree angle with the Mavic 3, which is giving us pretty good images. We did come out a second time. This is our third attempt. So the second time we came out, it was sunny and there was a lot of glare when we were mapping, when we were looking straight down. But a 45 degree or a 30 degree angle was okay with the sun behind. So we did also try a CPL filter, circular polarized filter on the Mavic 3 and it didn't really help. We tried some different settings, uh, different heights, different angles, but we weren't really noticing any difference at all. ND filters didn't work either. 
got the same problem with the, the sun glare over the water. So we've just gone through the normal settings and um, yeah, capture those 45 degree shots, which really came out really well. We've got a lot of uh, details showing the grounds around the lake, which is gonna help us stitch the model together. So there's a lot of detail that we can see in the water. There's a lot of vegetation in different colors of vegetation. So the darker ones, obviously a lot older and the bright green ones are the new vegetation, which is gonna give the client what they need. All right, we're back in the office. I just thought we would unpack this operation a little bit further. Uh, let's talk about some of the results, uh, some challenges, and then what would potentially do better next time. So Nick, take us through uh, with some of the results that I'm seeing right here. Yeah, the results came out pretty good. So we used MetaShake to create the author mosaic. We had a lot of data with different uh, overlaps. Um, the manual capture worked out the best. That's as simple as grabbing all the data uploading it into the system yeah. and then it'll spit out this author mosaic and it's all geo-referenced due to have a few different workflows to create the model so point that first and then generating author mosaic i thought like you said geo-reference so everything is gps accurate to the centimeter that was really important for the client yeah. as well because they want to know which area on the lake exactly yeah yep. we've got what the client needed there are some few gaps in the data because of uh, the manual process you can also see some areas here where there's like little patches of reflection yeah. which i'm assuming is when top we're shooting top down yeah, so the biggest challenge was uh, we had to manually capture it. And the reason for that was we couldn't fly an automated mission and have the camera tilt at a 45 degrees. It was going straight down and that was a limitation of the drone at the time. So that's that's why the manual capture. Also atmospheric uh, conditions. Yeah, sun, uh, we thought sun would be good, but it wasn't. There was a lot of glare on that lake, on that water. But there was also a fair bit of wind, which caused a fair bit of waves uh, on the lake and uh, lost detail. You can see through to um, get the vegetation. Cool. So uh, I guess next time, what would we do different? Well, now we have a new feature that's come out on the Mavic 3 Enterprise, which allows us to automate that mission and have the camera tilted on a 45 or 35. We can control that tilt, which means we can run it through a flight plan and overshoot it with more overlap and get better data. And manual capture. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that job show. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel and check out Drone Masterclass Academy. There's way more courses and free resources out there. Uh, that's it. Signing off. See you guys in the next one.